I'm the social worker. Oh, you're the social worker? She's and I'm the trainer. Right now, the massage oh. Well, I mean, I can come back and get them, but you want to tell me what you do as a social worker with a veterinarian? Sure. Um, I actually co-own it with, with my partner, the vet, um, and we spend a lot of time supporting people as they're going through issues with their pets, um, either family situations where two people may be fighting because the, the, the pet is doing something that they don't like. Um, and obviously end of, a lot of end of life stuff, people needing support with um, preparing for the, for the animals passing and then after they're, after they're put to sleep. And uh, how long has this group been going? Uh, well, we, we've been open um, since July 2003, so almost two years. And you're located? We're located in Borum Hill, Brooklyn. And have do you find that there's a great demand for your services? Oh yeah, yes. Are you are you something that other vets might refer people to that are having problems in this area? We are certainly for social work services, yes, and also for massage therapy and hydrotherapy. Um, a lot of other vets don't have those facilities. Who's a massage therapist? That'll be him. Hi. I've never heard of massage therapy as it would relate to, uh, a, I assume, a dog or a cat or both? Or cats, yes. You will start to hear it more and more. Um, part of the reason you haven't heard much is because there really aren't that many training programs around. And uh, indeed, when I started my training program, it was very new. Um, but that, I think, will... Could you take your hat off while I'm I filming? Because it'll let everybody picture. I think... I think that will very quickly change as the demand for this grows, and it is um, the information that's becoming available on it uh, is increasing rapidly. Have, have there been some major articles, or can you uh, find it on the internet? Yes, you will be able to find uh, quite a bit of information on the internet. What would be the key words? Uh, animal massage. And is it? I just wonder, what is the point of animal massage? Uh, well, it could be for just general relaxation like most humans would get them. Uh, I'm, since I'm working for the veterinarian, all the cases are being referred to me by the vets. And so I'm getting, I get a lot of cases of arthritis, I get cases of hip dysplasia, uh, recovery after surgery. Um, uh, all kinds of things, but, but no. mainly I'm getting animals in need, uh, elderly dogs and cats. As someone who's had animals very much in need, <laughs> both cats and dogs, there must be a real difference between, like I can't imagine my cat putting up with massage therapy. My dog might possibly love it. You might be surprised. I've, I do a fair amount of cat clients. Um, yes, of course there are some that, that don't want to be manipulated that way. Um, yeah. But there are a lot of dogs that don't too, but I've had cats who are very open to it and can can last through a whole 30 minute massage and, and love it. Are there different, are there different, I want to get close because of that sound, are, are there different breeds of dogs? In other words, I know some breeds differ greatly in their temperaments. Like, I don't want to put you on the spot, but are there problem breeds? And also, are there breeds that are really a joy to work with because you know they're going to be very uh, receptive to massage therapy? Yeah, very general. I, I don't want to. I understand. I don't want to get too specific, but I'm. I'd say if I had to pick like the two or three most difficult dogs, they would be the really tiny dogs like Chihuahua, um, Yorkshire Terrier. I've had a, a few, but but I mean. There have been well, it'd, very be, it'd, few. Be, it'd be hard to deal with a Rottweiler who didn't like the idea, right? Uh, well, the Rottweilers I've had are very open to it, and they were very relaxed oh. about it. I'm just thinking in terms of size. I, I, right, but I mean, the, the breeds that you might think might normally be aggressive pit bulls, I've had some very, very gentle ones who love the massage. This is really fascinating. I'd like to do a radio show with you if I ever did a radio program. Is a big dog, like you're dealing with arthritis, would a big dog with arthritis possibly benefit more or be easier to deal with, say, than a small dog with arthritis? In, in working I a massage want, yeah, I would think Not necessarily. No. I, Certainly you have to, I have to adjust, you know, the amount of pressure depending right. on the size of the animal and, uh, and the muscle group. But uh, 
but, but you can find it in the Chihuahua just as easily as in the Rottweiler. Are they receptive to the idea of massage? Because you know people laugh at these supposed um, psychiatrists or psychologists that treat animals with problems. They're held up to sort of ridicule sometimes. Uh, I would, I would not. Animals have the same sorts of problems that humans do too. Um, and it's always more complicated because they, they're, they're less in control of their situation than the humans are. But you find that people uh, don't make any special issue about saying, oh, massage for a dog or an animal is... Not at all, because like, they see the benefits. They see that their animal improves. Um, Do you find a lot of people come to you because they themselves have benefited from massage or chiropractor treatment themselves? Point, most people know about massage well enough. And most people have had it at some point, so I don't know that that's particularly why they're coming. They usually, I think they're mostly coming because they see that their animal is, could benefit from it. In, um, in our cases, I think most of the people who are coming for a massage, they've been referred they've been referred by one of the vets, but oftentimes it's the first time they're hearing about it. And then it's just a matter of seeing the results of the work on the animal.